Welcome back to Build a Dream. Hi, we're here at the Spahula residence doing a diagnostic on their house to find any construction issues that might affect the comfort and utility costs of their house. Darren Waschek's here with me. Darren's going to have a crew inside. So Darren, tell me, why would a homeowner want to do a diagnostic like this? Well, when it's really hot in the summertime, people get pretty concerned about their high utility bills and comfort, like you said. We also can come into a house and we can evaluate um, uh, dust in the house. In this case today, we're going to go in and we're going to take a look at the duct system to see if it's overly leaky. We're also going to uh, use an infrared camera to evaluate the performance of the insulation. So I think we should walk away with some pretty good information today to give the homeowner. Sounds great. Let's get started. Excellent. Okay, Darren, I see a duct and a fan here. What's going on? This is a duct, uh, duct blaster. This allows us to measure duct leakage. What we did is we went and hooked up the uh, piece of equipment to the return side of the air conditioning system. This is where the air filter is. And then we've taken our tape and we've actually uh, taped up all the supply registers so that, that we've closed off the system. And with this fan, what we do is we actually will suck the air out of the air conditioning system. So we turn the fan up to negative 25 pascals. You can see that. Mm -hmm. And then we turn over to uh, uh, adjust our instruments so that now we can actually measure how much cubic feet per minute leakage we have. And you can see we have about 103 cubic feet per minute, we call it CFM of leakage, coming out of this particular duct system. So is that good or bad? What's the, what's the reading mean? Well, this is actually pretty good for this house, um, for this particular air conditioning system. If it was just 103, that would be good, but we've got two systems on this house. And in fact, because we've only tested one, we can guess that we're going to probably get that amount of leakage uh, again on the other one. And so we, look, we start to get concerned when we see numbers about 250, 300 cubic feet per minute. That's a concern. But uh, in this house, it's not too bad. But when we jump up in the attic, we're still going to find a few things, I'm sure. OK, so why would a homeowner care whether or not the air conditioning system leaks? Well, keep in mind that the homeowner has paid money to condition the air, heat it or cool it. If the duct work up in the attic leaks it before it ever makes it into the house, we've got problems because now we have to run the air conditioner longer just to keep the house cool and that's where the high utility bills come from. Okay, so when we get up in the attic, if it's leaking a lot, we'll be happy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like good visual, but not good for the homeowner. Okay. It's over 140 degrees in the attic. Let's see how Darren's doing. We're up in the attic now taking a look at this air conditioning system. You can see it's pretty tight, definitely warm, but sometimes this is what we need to do to find out where the real problems are. We're looking at the air handler side of the air conditioning system. This is actually the, where the supply air is. Uh, Jesse, go ahead and run the smoke again. At this point, we're pressurizing the system, which means we're blowing air into the ductwork. And with the smoke, we can actually start to visualize where those holes are. Oh, yeah, I see the smoke coming out over here. You can see we've got leakage. On this seam right here is a problem. Normally, a seam like this would actually be sealed with a mastic and a mastic is a white material like paste that you actually paint on the joints and it's got really good life with a uh, ductwork in a hot attic like this. You can start to see the smoke hopefully coming out and then right behind me here I'm not sure if you can see it we've got this ductwork piece here that's got smoke leaking out of it because they didn't put any of the mastic seal on the joints. Is it normal to see leakage through the air handler? Absolutely. And it's most important that we look at the air handler leakage because this is where our pressures are highest, meaning that we're real close to the fan. And when we have high pressures real close to the fan, that means that we have even more leakage. Darren, it's pretty hot in here. What do you say you come down? Hey, Darren, so you got the thermal camera going. Absolutely. I've done a whole look at the house just to try and find out where those trouble areas are. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and with the infrared camera, we can actually determine where the hot spots are visually. Um, for instance, go ahead and put your hand against the wall over there, and I'll show okay. you a neat trick. OK, I got your hand. Go ahead and pull it away and come take a look at the monitor. See if we can see your handprint still. Wow. It's a pretty sensitive camera, but again, what it allows us to do is visualize where the insulation is working and where it's not working. Now, I'm glad you caught up with me right here because we've got a spot up in the corner there that you can see is actually really warm. Let me focus in, in a little oh, better. Yeah. See those reds and the right. whites popping out there? Where we see the red and, the, and towards the top of that spectrum, that's where it's really hot. And again, along the side, you can see that the hottest parts are going to be red. And as you go down towards the bottom, you'll see the blue or the cooler areas. Right. 
So in this particular spot, you can see that it's nice and cool on the, on the right as we pan to the left and down, you can see we've got actual cavities of insulation that are not working properly. And you've got the temperature gun in your hand as well. Yeah, what does this thing do? And you can point that at the wall too and actually it'll give us the actual temperature reading. What do you got? Looks like about 85. And go ahead and point up in that trouble corner and tell me what you're reading up there. Wow, up to 97. Okay, and you can see that most people, they'll have a gun like this that'll give them an idea of what's happening. Whereas with the infrared camera, it's popping out images and shapes. So we, can, we know that uh, what's going on behind this wall is that we have the insulation not touching the drywall, which is critical when it comes to insulation performing the way it's supposed to. So Darren, you wanted to show me something here in the bedroom? Yeah, when I was looking over in this area, I found that spot right there, and you can see that there's a piece of insulation actually missing, a square, that cavity is right. missing. And then we've got a couple of small areas in this air, this uh, over the window. And then back over here, we have blowback oh, uh, yeah. occurring. What, what's blowback? Blowback's when actually the loose fill insulation is, is blown back, actually, around the perimeter of the house because of at ventilation holes. I see. So that's a, that's a problem that we see all the time in houses. And it's as easy as putting in baffles during construction to make sure that it gets fixed. How about after construction? How well, do we fix that? You can put baffles in afterwards. Um, usually during construction, it's best. And sometimes those are just hard to reach at areas. Now, remember, we took those temperature readings before. Right. Take a shot of this window over here. Okay. And you can see that we're going to have some pretty high temperatures at the window. Wow, 128. 128, that's huge. And the drywall up above? We're about 93. Okay, so you can see it's a big temperature difference. Yes. Windows, weakest link in your building envelope. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important in a hot climate like ours to do something to the windows to block that heat from coming in, either shade screens, a low E coating, tint, something. Even shade with a tree will make your windows perform better if you can block that sun. No matter what you do, though, the window is still your weakest link. It always will be, but there's, that's why it's an easy way to make your house perform better if you do something there. I see. Our visit with the Spahulas today has brought them mixed news. However, at least they know some of the reasons why their utility bills are so expensive and what they can do to bring them back down to a reasonable range. We'll be right back with more ways to build it green.